just use a raise hand function if you have a question. Looks like we're ready to go. So, Coach, whenever you're ready for your opening statement. Yeah, I mean, obviously going into Rupp's a big game. That You know, they're back to being the Kentucky. Everybody expects them to be the top five in the country. So, I think this is the uh, seventh, sixth time we played a sixth time we played a top five team. So we're uh, we're two and three. You know, it's hard to beat top five teams, especially on the road. We're gonna have to play really well against the most AP top five opponents anybody's played since Ohio State in 2012-13. From what Aaron told me, so our guys are pretty well battle tested. You know, I don't think the uh, environment the Game's going to be too big for him. We've been in big games, but we're going to have to play well. And we did a pretty good job with Sheboy. Charles did the first time. You know, I'm guessing Sheboy's going to be ready to go this game. We uh, didn't do a great job in transition. Last time I thought they got too many transition opportunities and they missed some of them. We can't rely on them missing, you know, turning it over, missing layups or whatever this time, you know, and obviously our shooting was really poor. We're going to have to make some shots to beat them at Rupp. You know, we're not going to be able to go three for 30 from three and have any chance to win this game. So we're going to have to take care of the ball on offense, make some shots on defense. We're going to have to do a great job. We're going to have to keep them off the glass, keep them out of transition. You know, and they, they got downhill in the paint a little bit too much too. So we, uh, you know, we played all right defensively the first game. We just, we just come make a shot. Thanks, Coach. Let's go ahead and get started with questions. Uh, Mike Rodak, Rodak, go ahead and start us off. Yeah, Nate, you've talked about players kind of coming together and playing for one another, and it seems like that was kind of the case in the second half on Wednesday night. Just how much as a coach do you need to wait for that to happen organically on your team, and just how long has this taken maybe compared to other seasons you've had? I mean, the, the internal leadership on, on the team can make that happen a lot sooner. You know, we, we need it. I think some guys are trying to realize maybe what we're missing. There's enough talent. You know, obviously we're going to have to make shots to, to beat teams. There's enough talent to beat anybody in the country. You know, it's more that we're going to play for each other. We're going to play hard every day. You know, if, you're, if your leaders are playing hard every day and demanding that everybody else, it, it comes a lot sooner. But, you know, the, the best teams are always player-led, player-coached teams. And, I think we've got some guys trying to step up and lead. You know, I, even today in practice, you know, Rojas has been real vocal. Shaq's been real vocal. I think, you know, Noah's getting more comfortable that way. So, got some guys trying to step up and uh, and be leaders for this team. I think that's where this thing's really got to get to. Nick Kelly? Yeah, uh, Charles had another strong performance against Mississippi State. I mean, how much is him playing with an edge going to be an X factor for how this team does kind of down the stretch? I think it's huge. You know, we need him to anchor our defense. Our defense has been our main issue this year. He can really anchor it, block shots, six blocks. You know, if he's aggressive, you know, kind of attacking those drives. You now, this game, he's got to be smart, you know, because our guards got beat way too much last game. Ball got downhill every time he stepped up. It seemed like they were finding Damian Collins on a lob. So, but Charles rebounding dunking the ball hard, blocking shots. It's going to be key for us down the stretch here. I think he's playing with some aggressiveness. He's playing with some toughness, some confidence. You know, I, I like where Charles is at right now. Go next to Charlie Potter. Yeah, hey, Coach. Just how much does Kentucky change, if at all, if Ty Ty Washington can't play? I haven't seen the latest on him, but with him dealing with an injury, what does that maybe change for you guys? I mean, it's not like they get – that much worse than the starting lineman. Dav Davian Mintz has been playing great for him. Ty Ty is obviously good. He scored it really well against us here last time and led him in scoring. But, you know, so they're going to be missing a good player. But they're going to replace him with a really good player, too. I think where it hurts him is in their depth. You know, Mintz gave him some real scoring off the bench. They won't have that if Mintz has to go to the lineup. So, you know, and they, you look at the last game, they played nine guys, but, you know, Lance Ware only played four minutes. You know, so Lance has been playing more lately. You know, Damian Collins played as many minutes against us as he had played against anybody pretty much. So, you know, if you look at, you know, Toppin where Collins and Mintz were the only guys off the bench, well, Toppin where and Collins are all fours and fives. So if they have to start Mintz, they're either going to have to go bigger, 
which is hard to do against us with you know with how we play it's harder to guard us when you you know you're playing a four three and a two fives together two fours in there so they're just their depth will take a little bit of a hit you know they do have some other guys that didn't play against us that can maybe play if uh you know, if Ty Ty can't go, but I think that's where they take their biggest hits, just in their perimeter depth. Michael Browner, go ahead. Hey, Coach. I wanted to ask you about Shibwe, uh specifically. Obviously, he's a player of the year guy. He had one of his, I guess, least productive games of the season against you guys last time, but still had 10 and 15. What, if anything, can you guys do to kind of stop him? Yeah, that's saying something when you say he's had one of his least productive games and he had 10 and 15. He had a double-double with 15 rebounds, so kind of tells you the quality of player he is. You know, he's going to be in the conversation, if not right at the front for SEC Player of the Year as well as National Player of the Year, depending on how Kentucky probably finishes the year out here. But, you know, I, Charles' length bothered him scoring in there. You know, he still got rebounds. You know, we still gave him some angles here and there. We, we've got to do, a, you know, a good job of keeping Charles out of foul trouble. Shibway was in some foul trouble too. You know, he ended up with four fouls. So that that would help if we could get him in foul trouble again. But you know, I do I do think he's he's got problems scoring over like real length because he's got to get an angle. You know, he's big, strong, physical. If he gets an angle, he's gonna go score. But if you don't give him those angles and kind of keep length in front of him, you know, then the problem is can can you box him out? He's great at getting his own misses as well as other people's misses. But you know, I I think Charles will be ready to play him again. At, you know, we just we're gonna have to do a good job. We're gonna have to really focus in on not giving him angles to the rim. All right, looks like this will be our final question from Katie Wyndham. Go ahead, Katie. Kind of bouncing off that, another question about Charles. You know, he was just saying that it took him a little bit of time to get used to the physicality of the game, and he's faced some of the best bigs in the country this year. You know, how much do you think facing guys like Shibwe and Timmy and Holmgren has kind of helped him develop uh, as a freshman this year? I think it's been real big. We we showed our guys a a graph that was put up on the internet. I can't remember even who put it up on it was on Twitter. It just basically went like which players in college basketball have had to go against the best players all year. And I think seven out of the top eight players were Alabama players just because we played all the best teams and best teams have best players and our guys have had to go against the better players and Charles is in that group of seven, you know, I think, you know, him having to guard the quality of bigs that he's had to guard, you know, gave him a great experience early as a freshman, which has made him grown up a lot quicker and sooner than maybe a typical freshman would. I think he's in a great place for the middle of February for a freshman. He's playing a lot more like he's a sophomore and has been played in a lot of games because he's had to go so many reps against such quality players in our games this year. So I, I think that was big. I think it's been big for a lot of our guys. I mean, Shaq was up there having to go against, you know, some of the best players in the country a lot. I think it's made a lot of our guys better defenders. All right, looks like we have one last follow-up from Mike Rodak. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I just wanted to ask real quick about the Phil Knight field that came out this week. Um, just your thoughts on how that came together and being a part of that that tournament next year. Yeah, I mean, that thing's huge. I mean, that's Nike trying to put the best Nike schools in the country in, you know, that tournament. So if you look at who we get to play up there, you know, our side of the bracket, you know, Michigan State, I spent 11 years in, you know, Detroit, so I was up there a lot. I mean, Izzo was one of the best coaches in the country. They got one of the best programs. So, you know, you find out right away early in the year if your teams are tough enough, you get the fortune to play Michigan State, UConn's, Hurley's done a great job, know him well. You know, they're going to be one of the toughest, hardest playing teams in the country every year. Iowa State, I know TJ is one of my best friends in the business. They're, they're one of the best defensive teams in the country this year. Carolina one of the, got one of the best basketball traditions in the country. Villanova won national championships, one of the best basketball schools in the country. I mean, it's an unbelievable field. And we get the opportunity to go out there and play against that level of competition early in the year. You know, and as you guys know, I like playing good teams, great competition early. Let's get our weaknesses exposed. Let's try to work on them in non-conference. So I think that gives us a uh, – now, having said that, if you know, if we end up playing three of those schools in that tournament, we probably – we've already got Gonzaga coming back to Birmingham next year. we got to go to Houston. 
have Memphis coming to our place. You know, we probably won't be a whole lot of other real high-level games that we add to the schedule based on that, that bracket right there. All right. Thank you, Coach.